Okay, so good morning, everybody. Hope you can hear me clearly. It's okay. Yes. Okay. So this is a one-hour session, like for improving the mechanical design calculations by using Revit MEP. So I think many guys I have seen before as well, like familiar familiar faces, like they might be using Revit MEP for so many years. Uh, but it's something like. You know, presently the industry is using for like uh, only 3D modeling and coordination stuff like that. So the session is more regarding the design stuff, so how what calculations and stuff you can do. So about me, I am working as a beam technical consultant with Dr. Desk. I have done like a bachelor's in mechanical engineering. Uh, I worked previously as a design engineer with Atkins before joining Autodesk and as a beam specialist as well. About this class, like we will cover a few topics regarding the design, <coughs> like uh, duct and pipe size calculations in Revit MEP, uh, some pressure up calculations, uh, how we can create the velocity maps and how we can do the equipment scheduling like automatic and also like air balancing and air flow checks. We also see about the SRA 62.1 configuration, how we can do that in Revit, and plus how we can do the third party configuration with the other softwares for heat load calculations. Uh, just want to know, like uh, from our group here, how many people are actually, you know, using, uh, like actually designing, actually. Okay. Okay. So presently the existing method is like uh, people are using too much of Excel sheets for calculations, you know, thumb rules and stuff like that, calculating areas manually from the AutoCAD and doing the load calculations in HAP or IES or any train trace software. This is like, uh, you know, they are manually creating the spaces, manually, manually inputting the data and everything. So this consumes a lot of time actually, you know, you spend, you know, calculating the area for the whole building and stuff like that. Uh, people are still using like Revit uh, for the 3D coordination, but uh, they are not using this one. So it lacks a difference. Like they are spending time on the calculation stuff, but they are not using Revit. Dates have all the capacity to you know do all those things. Some of them can be done. Some of them have some limitations as well. Yeah. So what we can do here is like duct and pipe size calculations, which are uh, based on different methods. We have like friction, velocity, equal friction, static regain. It's just uh, initial PPT, so don't be worried about that. Then we'll have a demo later on on the Revit MEP. Plus you can have the pipe sizing. It's like uh, friction, velocity, and also for the plumbing, we have like uh, international plumbing code, IPC 2012, from which it converts the friction unit to the flow rates for the water supply, hot and cold. Plus it has uh, duct and pipe size calculations which are based on three met methods written here. I think it's simplified Colebrook equations now. It's name changed in 2016. Plus you have other features like uh, you have a system inspector in which you can do the critical path. You can find the critical path for any, any, any system. Either it's like a pipe one or ducting. Plus, uh, you have like creating a schedules in uh, Revit MEP by which you can do the airflow checks of different spaces that you create in Revit MEP. And that can be also used for air balancing if you want to, if you're working on some hos hospital project, it's very important actually to positive pressurize or negative pressurize or anything need to be made neutral. Plus, you can create the velocity maps here and you know, automatic equipment scheduling which matches with your schedules and uh, with your layouts and with your, you know, so everything is calculated like if you change anything, you know, uh, any flow rates in any of the diffusers or anything, that will be tabulated in your FCU, so it will be automatically updated. So you don't need to do different things like you <coughs> do on the layout first, then you update the schedules, sorry. Lights. 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 
Ahí está el volumen. Well, that's just from there. Am I not able to see this one? Okay. Plus this is uh, for the H sixty two point one, which is like on the left side is the standard, and the right side you have that is configured in the Revit. Uh, we will see that how it is configured in the Revit MEP and how we can use to calculate the outdoor requirement for the spaces, different spaces in the building. And also the third party configuration or integration for heat load calculation with the software is like presently I have just HAP with me. Uh, but uh, we can do with train trace 700 and IES as well or any other if they have the cap, like uh, if they can uh, understand the GBXML files so the export and import we'll show that uh, that thing as well okay. So this is a small building, uh, just for the demo purpose I have created this one, uh, just some small office area in which you know, different rooms are served with FCU and there is a fresh air and something like that and there is a chill water as well. So I think the people here understand this thing, how to at least create the modeling stuff in Revit MEP, right? It's not something, it's okay with that, right? Because I'm not here to cover how to model pipes, how to do model ducts and all those things actually. Okay. So just take this uh, example as like a small example of this room here. You can see like the small system connected with the supply diffuser here and FCU. Let's make it straight. Yep. So you know like uh, the flow, we set the flows here in the air terminals. By default there are some values but we need to set the flows for, for example for this room. So if I change like you can see if it is, it is connected to the system now, you can see that it's total like 205 is shown here and the tabulates here for the 415 and so as many as air terminals are connected it will tabulate automatically on the duct one. So I mean change, if you, if you change anything. If you change something like 250 here, so you know the whole system will be updated. And this is a thing like your tags are updated, your you know the uh, flows are updated and everything, and you can do the sizing later on. But in a traditional method, like you know, I have seen the drawings like uh, you know you just update the tags, but the actual size is not there, or the duct is of different sizes, or the flows are different, it's not matching, the schedules are not matching actually. So. This is the thing is it keeps the consistency of your design like if you update one of the air uh, terminal it automatically you know tablets everything and updates your flow throughout the system and it's applicable for ducting, piping and everything. So for example, if you just, you know, I have a bit of a few flow rates here, for example here, and just make it something like uh, 200, so 600 total to be easy to calculate. And now I want to size this duct, okay, so I select the system here, right, using a tab key, so it, it gives an option here. So for example, if you just want to size this part, you can just hit one tab here. If you size the full system, hit two taps and the whole system will be selected. Then you have option here like duct and pipe sizing. You click that. So it gives an uh, option like sizing methods. You have different sizing methods which are shown in the PPT. Like generally people do like uh, velocity and friction both. For example, for this room like keeps like three meter per second or you know 
friction with one pascal per meter you can change that to 5 or as per your standard whatever you know as per the room for example the corridor 5 meter per second rooms 3 meter per second whatever the standards you have it's, you can do according to that so just do okay the size is updated here for example, I have a ceiling, you know, of uh, I have a height restriction. Actually, I don't have a, I don't have a space where I can go beyond, like for example, 300, <coughs> that size. So you select the system again, and you know, you can restrict the height here. For example, you can see it's 450 by 450 right now. So you restrict the height to, for example, 300, for example, and just click that. So you can see the sizes are automatically updated. Resting the height, restricting the height to the 300. So consider like you have a full system, like in a, going in a corridor where you have only 300 or 250. You don't need to calculate again and again for like how much you know, ratio and all sorts of stuff. You just click that and it will be updated. Now, for example, here by default, like I see, like 140 by 140 of sizes is not. We generally do the minimum size we take is like 150 in general. So there are some mechanical setting. You can go to MS mechanical settings here. We have rectangular. Now these are the sizes here. You can switch off those one, which you don't want. So minimum size will be now 150. So click OK. Now I want to size this one. <coughs> Remove the restriction. So this is 150, which was 140 before, having the same sizing methods. The same thing is applicable, for example, chill water piping. You give your flows to the FCUs here. You can see the, all the properties. What is the water flow requirements? Like 0.5, you can change if it is one. You know, as per the design, whatever it is. You have the drain flow. Will not cover the drain here, but just the chill water. But same thing is applicable for it tabulates the flow. For the chill water, you can select the whole system. For example, I just select this whole chill water system. Since the system is connected, we will select the delta as well here because it's, the system is connected to the ducts and the pipes, right? So what I do is just to filter that. And I just want, I'd say just I want pipes and fittings, right? Select, select same thing. So I have to like 1.5, 1 meter per second whatever friction, 250 Pascal, and click OK. And we have the new sizes. If you increase the flow, for example, just check it out here. Might be too much. Let's check it out. The solid chain, sorry. Sixty five can have, which was previously two point five. So I change again sizing. Same. Size change to 65 dia. So in this way, you have the full system, and you can change the sizes. If you want to see the pressure drop, yeah, I will cover that. I will cover that. It's just the initial sizing. Now for the plumbing, <coughs> you have the same thing. Now it works based on the fixture units. So this is a small system. Like you are saying, can you have you know two WCs here connected together? Now, if you see the properties of any fixtures, we have your fixture units like waste fixture units, hot water fixture units, cold water fixture units. So these are the param parameters which are used, and parameters are very important for any 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 uh, like connectors. I will say the connectors are very important for our MEP because the, all these calculations cannot work without the connectors. And how to assign those connectors is also very important. I will show that, you know, what 
precautions should be taken because it, it, might ha it might happen many times like you are trying to calculate the flow and it doesn't show up. This so is like too many you know, preset values or something like that. You know, we'll show that how to do that. So these fixture units are assigned to this connector and it same way tabulates everything. So anything, if you add one of, for example, here just add the sink here and the hot water fixture unit for this one is 3. You see that hot water is like 6 fixture units for the 2 of the sinks. For example, if I connect one of those or if you are making any change in the drawing later on, you know the system will automatically update. 9. So this is how the system, you know, tabulates the whole thing. For the drainage is the same example here. You have various fixture units for that. It will tabulate accordingly. Now, for the sizing purpose, the sizing doesn't work in drainage, right? It works based on the fixture units and you size the pipe based on IPC stuff like. But here, you can convert the flow rate for the water supply and hot water supply. So I just go to mechanical setting. It's just you know you just go to calculations. You can see flow, which was shown in the IPC 212 here. It converts the flow from your fixture unit based on this standard. For example, I just okay. I just added this family. You know, I want to show for example flow as well in case. So I add flow here, goes there, and loading the project. You can see the flow is converted from the nine fixture units to 1.6 liter per second. So you, you have the total requirement of this one whole system, how much is required. For the pressure drop calculations, you have one system like this uh, fresh air from the H on the top. I just show you the model actually, so it's a bit clear. So it's served from the top, you know, it's going down and serving the two floors, and you have FCUs. It's a very simple system to understand, you know. So for that, we go to analyze here. So you have two options here, duct and pipe pressure drop calculations. So when you click duct pressure drop calculations, so it gives you the full list of the project, like how many systems are there. And you can see this system in your project browser as well here. Sorry, system browser. How many systems are there? Supply, return, all those things here. So go to analyze duct pressure drop calculations, select none. I just want to have the report of FHU is the one. Let's click OK. So you have different parameters here which you want to, you know, include in your pressure drop calculations report. Around number, wall size, diameter, plus these are the default ones, report fields. It depends upon you what, want, what you want to include in your report. And say generate, save it. Will you save as an HTML here? Yes. So it gives throughout all the section how much pressure drop is there, right? And also shows the critical path of that system. So this is the critical path, the bottom here, the total pressure loss of this one, 45. So the critical path, like for example, when you click this one, you have a system inspector here. You know, you just say inspect. The right one is the critical path. So it is not always the longest 
in our route, but it depends upon the flows and everything. Generally, people calculate on the based on the longest route. But for example, if I just increase anything here, the flow from 550 to 500, and check, so you can see the red one goes there. So that is your critical path now. So it depends upon the flow and not always the longest route. Right? <coughs> so these ones. <laughs> now here there are some limitations as well which I will you know uh, let you know. For some of the fittings in Revit MEP, for example, this shoe takeoff. So this loss method comes from the ASHRAE table for each or any, every fitting, right? But for this fitting and, you know, the T fitting goes which like that, you know, sorry. Uh, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't have the values actually. It doesn't calculate the values. Like for example, if you, if you want to just click this one, like it has some pressure drop here, which is coming from the coefficient of ASHRAE table, which has every, every table, you know, loaded in that. But for this fitting, and the Y1, it doesn't show up. So in this case, there's a workaround to do that actually. So what you can do, you can use the specific one. You know, you can use the specific loss, a specific coefficient, and you know, based on your calculation, what you are doing for your pressure up calculation in Excel sheet, what are the parameters you are using, you can assign those things to these fittings. And then it will tabulate the things, it will calculate how much pressure drop through that fitting is. So it will take just the manual calculation? Uh, it just, you apply to this fitting only two fittings. So somehow, you know, I also inquired about this one from the product team from San Francisco office, head office, but this is something which is missing right now. Yeah, yes, it will be. So that's, you can specify loss actually, how much loss will be there from that fitting. So it might be different, different sizes have different, different, you know, losses. So you can assign those things to that. You can create one table like a schedule and you can assign those things. It will be very easy rather than going here and clicking one by one. Can I select similar code and just add the value one time? Can I select similar code? Yes, you can select that thing. Uh, but the thing is the specific loss is not uh, consistent to every fitting. It's, it is based on your size of the fitting. So you, for example, I just assigned like 0.25 for this fitting, for all of them that is not true because your size will matter actually. So when you actually calculate from Excel sheet, it will be different. But you can assign this thing. This is always a workaround to do the things. So you can do that. You know, I need to see the connector. You can see the preset values. Now some of the fa families like, uh, you know, maybe an attenuator or an AHU by default, uh, they have different configuration like a preset or calculator, which you need to check first before you use them from any, any website or seek.autodesk.com or any other vendor or whatever. This flow configuration need to be set properly. By default, which Autodesk provides have some, you know, good configurations, you can use them by default. But if you are creating any family and creating connector, assigning connector, then these flow configurations connector, you know, should be assigned properly. And for example, FCU here, if I click that, it should be calculated. So it's very easy to understand, like you assign the flow rate to the diffusers, it calculates back to the FCU. The same, for, same way for the AHUs. For uh, duct accessories, it will be bi-directional, or a fitting. Or not that, um, I think it's for the attenuators. It will be bi-directional. So input the attenuator, it should be bi-directional. So it takes from there, goes out. It's not the preset, otherwise you will be, Assigning the values at the front end and the back end as well, so not the two values. View is bi-directional. Yeah, it will tabulate and goes down. Yeah. So whatever, like it calculates at one end, goes in this direction, it will be bi-directional then. But if if you like, uh, it depends upon because we have so many of things in MEP. You know, it's not like a one. So you need to be careful like what exactly. If it is not calculating, it will give you a warning, you know, so you can, because warning is the main thing which uh, tracks what exactly is happening in your system, right? So just always understand what, always analyze, sorry, to these warnings, what exactly it's saying. 
it will give you that the flow is not I, the thread is not able to calculate the flow because all the values are set to preset. This is very common error. So, and right behaves like what we give comes out. So. Now the velocity maps here. This is very important actually when these uh, big noise criteria. For example, I was working on Opera House in downtown, and it was having uh, noise criteria, you know, at very high level. Like uh, they wanted to know what is the uh, velocity in each every duct there, so it doesn't go beyond some certain dB. So we need to create some, you know. If you calculate for a memory system, it will be very difficult. You put an Excel and all those things. You have everything in place. You just create your duct legends here, like that, and the velocity map is created. So, if certain, if design changes and these rooms grow beyond certain limit, right, the color will change automatically. It will show. What are the velocities is going beyond? So, for example, 10 meter per second is red, so it's a point of concern here. So, you just if design changes and you are updating the flows, you can see that means you need to resize the duct here. You can also do this one for, you know, like a pressure drop as well. If I added the scheme, you know, <coughs> use the pressure drop. So you can know, I can just delete this one. one. So you have different colors for this one pressure drop. And you can set up the range as well between which to what you want. You can delete any of those. For example, between 0 to 5, one, 5 to 1, 1 to 1.5. If you want to create that, you can customize this one. Plus you have the flows as well, different way flows, how much flows are there, different different range. I have a question. Yes, please. Uh, this the standard uh, template that comes with Revit has something to do with utilizing this calculated uh, flows or uh, loads? Like, this is customized by me actually, this one here. So by default, if you see this one, by default it has different different like 0 to 50, 100. But by default it's coming yes. like that. But you can customize to whatever you want actually. Yeah. But uh, because my experience is, uh, I tried on the, I work uh, already for two companies. Mm. I tried in these both companies and also in my house, my personal uh, computer. Whenever I use this in, uh, I try to utilize this in uh, using the default metric template, it's not working. But uh, actually, I found it, it. It's only working in the Australian template. No, this is a UK metric template which I am using. Yeah, UK and uh, Australian, but in the metric template, it's not. Working. We have UK metric. We have US metric. There are two. Yeah, but uh, there is also one. Uh, in, there is two. Like for this region, we generally use UK metric, I think. And generally, I prefer US metric as well. But that is nothing to do with this one actually because this is whatever flow you have, it doesn't matter on the template actually. If it is a US uh, imperial, it will be shown as a CFM here. It's a metric is shows in a liter per second or meter per second here. I just want to find, to find out whether uh, is there any settings. Uh, uh, no, it just it's if you have your system correctly, you can just create the scheme here. Based on that, it will be it will be shown. Can you please switch on that? Just to go with this one, mechanical equipment. This created one equipment schedule here, mechanical equipment schedule. Uh, 
it shows with the different levels how many FCUs are there, which space, which we create the spaces in uh, Revit, and we can, we, uh, anything that comes in that location, it will be shown as. So for example, if you see this one FCU 10 here, you can see the airflow is 300 liter per second because I have two air terminals, 150, 150. So for example, if you are, again, the flow changes, a chain one, like I need to distribute like for example 600 here, I distribute like 300, 300 to each of them. You can see, FC10 is changed to 600. If you missed, I do undo. FC10, 300, I change the flows, 600. So this keeps your consistency between your layouts and the update on the schedules because many times it happens like your schedules <coughs> are not matching with your layout. It happens a lot. Okay, so uh, how generally you do actually? Yes. Why did the five zero? So how generally you do? Uh, if you uh, <laughs> like you do a cloud something, right? So same thing you can do here as well. Yeah. Because it's all connected to each of things. So you do the cloud. You, you, it is already mentioned like the changes are there. But, but it, you can also put here as a comment. There's a change. You can you can add and comment on that one, like there's a change from this one, because when you generate these schedules, your comment will reflect that thing. And plus, also you can put some parameters to show as red, green, or whatever, like to distinguish like what exactly change in your schedule. Now, now the. This water supply here is like, is manually actually. You can change in schedule, for example, right? So it will be updated in the FCU and it will be updated on the pipe as well. 1.5. This one. You can also customize this one. You can put the formula in the connector, right? So based on your flow, you can have your chill water requirement, delta T, all those things, you know, whatever formula you're using, you can put in there and create your water flow. So it, whenever there's a change in the flow rate, your chill water flow will be updated automatically as well, if you want that thing. Or either you can manually put that. So you can customize it. Yeah, we can put the formulas in that. I will, I will cover that in, not in this one, in, connector calculations, but how to put the formula stuff in the flow checks, airflow. So <coughs> I'm moving to the HTA one and the ACS calculations. Till now you have any questions regarding this one? Yes. I think, no. So you come again? Suppose this is the open ceiling. Yes. We have the diffusers and then return that also we need to connect to FC. Hmm. So but if pressure calculation, hmm. how you can connect the return and how you get the calculation? I will show that thing, yeah, in the schedule. But the thing is like whatever comes in your space, like with these diffusers, it will be calculated based on that. So you provide a parameter like outdoor air. Here you have supply return and exhaust three parameters only. So you create another parameter, project parameter called outside air, and you can tabulate that thing. It's, 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 it's with the return data. So you will get yeah, you, I just show you actually how it is. You, you can control this thing in the schedule actually. So this is the one, for example, if an engineer is using an 
you know, add changes method for the calculation, which is like based on the thumb rules. Just <coughs> sorry. <coughs> Just based on the initial thumb rules, if you want to calculate the how much air flow is required for a specific space or something. So your schedule is there, which helps you to identify your rooms, how many rooms you have in your building. And for example, you can see here the levels and the name, the number, room number, and the office areas here. Now this is the area is all tabulated automatically, plus you have the volume as well. Now. Generally, we do this one in Excel. You know, you create all all those uh, room areas and all those room names and room areas, then put the value 4 ACH, 6 ACH, and then you have the total airflow. And then you go back to the you know, your plan and provide how much is required. But since it is everything in Revit, you can use all the features of Excel here for the calculation purpose. You can use that. So, for example, I you know. If you go here, there is a parameter, a project parameter here called ACH, where you enter the value. You can create this well, um, a new parameter, and it should be assigned to spaces. So when you create a schedule of you know space, it comes with that. Plus you have an ACH airflow, which calculates like ACH into volume divided by 360. Right, that comes to your airflow. So that is the airflow required for your that specific room. So anything like this for the first floor on the top, and this for the second floor. So for example, if an office area requires like six ACH, then you know the airflow will be automatically updated here. It calculates based on that formula that we have provided. Right. I can change any time this one. So it calculates like that. So this is the one specified supply airflow. So this is the one which goes to that space that this much of air should be supplied to that area. So based on like I'm not going to distribute like 283 liter per second, right? So we generally do like 285 or just 300 by use of calculations, generally like this, or 725, this one. Since you supply this, uh, it, once you provide this data, it goes to that, you know, space that this much of air is required to be provided to this space. <coughs> now, there's another one, airflow checks. Like there are three parameters here: specified air supply, airflow, specified return, and exhaust. So this comes from engineer. Like how how much of airflow we go out, go in, return, exhaust, supplied. So this value came up from the values that we entered. In the ACH calculations. For example, storage, I just provide like 50. So you can see the airflow check is updated automatically here. Plus, you have a total for this floor required this much of air. You know, you can tabulate as well. You can provide, you can specify the return as well, how much is return. You can specify the exhaust and plus your outside air as well. For the Specified. <coughs> specified outside air. So this is your specified outside air. How much fresh air is required? You can enter the data here as well. Now this is the actual one here, which shows what actually you have distributed there. So this is based, this is, comes from the air terminals that you have provided in that space. So you cannot change that here. You cannot change because, for example, this director office here has two air terminals, right? And it's distributed, like for 600, like distributed 300, 300 to each of them. That's how it tabulates. This is the actual one. And for example, if the engineer supplies like, okay, this room requires uh, 300 but goes like 600 so he can check from here what's the actual difference I, I, from the design there is 300 but it's actually supply 600 so he actually he can check rather than going from the plan each and everywhere it's just from the schedule from here he knows what exactly the changes are if it is zero it won't highlight if it is equal for example this 300 300 is there so 
So if I change, for example, this one, actor of is one to 200, oops, sorry, 200 goes to this one, so you will see it's 400 is actual supply and the design was 300, you can check. If I change it to 400, it will be zero. The difference is just a, you know, subtraction from the actual to minus to supplied, supplied to actual. This should be zero always because whatever the engineers provide, that is need to be distributed in that space. Similar thing you have like air balancing here in which you can calculate based on that like how much airflow has supplied in this area, how much is written for each and every room, you know, and how much is outside, how much is exhaust. So once you do that, you know, your total here will show flow by flow for the full building that is a, each room that is positive or negative. Like if you have more supplied spot, you know, extract is more is negative like that. And you can track it up here with your colors. You can put different, 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 different colors. Like if it is positive, it shows like green or, you know, if it's neutral, it shows orange, or if it is negative, it shows red. So you can create different, different parameters. So just uh, if you see this parameter here is showing red, why? Because it's just the supply airflow minus return airflow plus exhaust airflow. So if the supply and return is more, then it will show as minus. That's why it's highlighting. Formatting, condition format, you can use the condition format here, for example, this one. The condition format is, if it is not equal to zero, you should highlight as red. If it is greater than zero, you can highlight as like green, so positive. If it is less than zero, it's negative. This is how you can control. So rather than doing all those things in different access sheets and different different layouts and all those things, you can club everything in Revit and it tracks everything and you know everything is updated, everything is linked together. It's not something that somebody else is doing something else and he is doing something else. Now this is the one which I need to share with you guys, like actually 62.1 standard. So you might have seen this one. It's shown like, you know, this is, I think this is one seven I have right now. So this is the table, which is uh, from the ASHRAE 62.1, which calculates, which helps you to calculate the outside air requirements. So it gives the outside air based on liter per second per person, <coughs> liter per second per meter square. So you add up both and you calculate how much total air, outside air is required. So how we can do that in Revit, that's the thing. So this is uh, how it is created, I will show you like, if you go to the new schedule here, quantities. You go to the spaces there's a schedule key here so use that schedule key to input your data and then once it is done you can put all the values all the occupancy category here from the 62.1 plus you create a new parameters here like which is uh, <coughs> project parameters you can see here outside area outside area, ra rp which are the values coming from these ones, R A R P. This is one time configuration that you need to do manually, but you can bring this in different different projects. So the initial task that you need to do if you want to use it, right? So even for me, is one if it is not it is not fully configured, it's like half of that it is configured here. <coughs> for this building, it's like I just need office area, so it's already there. Offices. Now, how can we use that for the calculation? 
if you go to you know this one ventilation we create a new schedule uh, like it's all the space schedule here actually when you create a new schedule just go to the space schedule and you create these things so again you have a room name area volume these are the default parameters this, this is nothing uh, created as a new something it's all shared parameters all from the rabbit you know it is not something like a add in or something you know nothing nothing is from outside from rabbit it's by default what you have you just customize few things and you get those calculations so your rice 62.1 is here so for example you can the category there at the back of the schedule you can select what exactly for example there's an office area so you just go like general office building office space here so this value will show up R P R A, which comes from this schedule. Oops, from here. Based on that, you have an outsider requirement. How this one calculates is area. So it's like in general, it's like area into. RA number of people into RP is the addition of those. So you use the same formula for this one. Now you will find when you, you when you would just simply do like area into RP and oh, RA and RP into number of people, you won't get the values actually. It will say incon inconsistent units. So how you can do that actually? You for for the cancellation of any any unit like liter per second or meter square or something, what you need to do is just put one slash one, so that unit is cancelled. Then you have the number. So same thing is done here. If you see area divided by one, cancel out this unit, and then R A into plus number of people into R P, because these are numbers. I just want numbers and not liter per second or meter square or whatever. Right. So based this on based on this formula, you know the calculations comes out here. So it's like 18.78. I put like 20 liter per second. I specified the values, which shows up again in this one. Air balancing here. So I know how much air outside air I use there, based on the calculations. So if anybody asks, like you know, is based on the ASHRAE or not? Or yes, it is based on ASHRAE because the calculations are there. Yes, if yeah, we can add that parameter as well. I try to make it simplified actually, but we can use a zone effectiveness EZ as well. Can we, can we, uh, yeah, we just yeah. So same way, what you have like done here, 62.1, you provide the zone effectiveness and use the same value. So you assign that one, like I assigned the huh? If you don't assign, how it will know like which zone effectiveness you need to? But you can put the formula as well. Yeah. Because that input comes from you, you know. You need to provide how much zone effectiveness. And I think zone effectiveness is for if we are doing the heating. I'm not sure actually. Anybody can answer? So it depends on the ratio of outdoor air to supply air. So hmm. and the amount of uh, carbon dioxide in liquid. Yeah. So if you want that thing, that you can you can create that parameter and the same formula that is used here. For example, calculating this one, you can use zone effectiveness and EZ value. You can provide as the EZ value here. Yeah. You can do many things around that. Once you have calculation, it's the same thing that you do in Excel. Like you pro provide many parameters. So. So. This, uh, this is all I have right now. You know, if you have any questions, you can ask me. Yes. This one works the same way with groups because you have so many rooms here. Each one have one system. Mm -hmm. If it's group, it works the same way. Groups means groups, yeah, like you want to create one group and copy it. Uh, for MEP, actually, I won't suggest to do grouping. That is not the best practice, actually, to do the grouping. For MEP especially, for agricultural structure is different story, but for MEP is not the right thing because it impacts your performance as well, and many things are there. When you have a big uh, building, there are a lot of similarity. 
the thing is it depends when if you have a system connected together yeah it will work if the system is not connected it won't work but for example if uh, for small project is okay i can understand your question actually but if you have very huge project then you had you can't handle that in one model actually you do different different models you have right so you, you cannot distribute like 100 liter or like 1000 liter per second from that model to this one but there's also a work around to that one actually you provide the additional flow sorry you put a, provide additional flow in that section where you know the duct is yes so you either create a small family a small connector put the same values that comes as a you know with tabulates at the end provide that and we'll continue this is the thing for whatever you have in your model it is uh, based on that whatever you put in your model it will quantify that thing so it is not based on formula if you put a small rectangular box it will be can like it will show okay. the, uh, the yeah i think it's there is the duct fittings right no. it's not there no anons transitions almost stack quantifies okay for that what i can say is that like either create the schedule for the systems in that systems you will you will get the ducts and the fittings i believe i need to check actually i didn't check that thing i will check that thing yeah. i didn't try that Uh, like for example here I calculated a value so you put for example so you put a name here and you put the formula here anything else can yes. you also create um, schedule if for example I have a um, rabbit link for example, my, as, as what you have said, for example, I have uh, my docs separated and my uh, chilled water is separated. So can I have, in, for example, in chilled water um, file, I can also put the doc yes. schedule there yes. through this copy link? Yes. So what you need to do when you are creating a, a schedule, mm -hmm. just click that include elements in the link. So you will get that thing. So for example, if I, the link here is architecture, so I want to get the rooms, so it will come up here. So same way you can do like ducting or plumbing, you want to create a schedule of that in here. Generally like as a shop drawings or whatever, we are creating a different file and linking the model, so you can create it by these things. Suppose you are working on a project, okay, so everything should be unique. You make a template, see, on a bigger project, there could be multiple people working. Yes. So you, a guy is working on one area, but everything should be same for all the areas. So can't you make a template and use it for everything? Same for means? Uh, See, say there is a hospital. Okay. okay. Now you will give the recommendation, air changes, this, that. Yes. For different type of room. Yes. Okay. So what you are doing in one part of the floor, it should be everywhere. Yes, it Similar. should be. Yes. So if you make a template, mm -hmm. 
will it not select it automatically for entire floor or all the floors? Uh, for that, what you can do is like, like for example, if you have like ten floors of similar category. Yes. Uh, I'm just you want to come out with a different result for all the Yeah, you can, you can uh, instead of itemizing that thing, I think there's an option here. But I, I'm not sure how it will work. But if you want to assign it, that can be done because it's similar room. So you assign the room type. So when you assign the room, it's, it, it's, it depends. Like if you create that parameter, room types, and you know it's assigned to that thing. So it will assign all the values to similar things. So it, it, it keep, uh, understand, you know, it, keep, it keeps the consistency throughout the project then. model we have four, four files another file we have for the sheet file we need all the calculations only in the sheet, sheet mode we don't need in the part part mode how we can create a calculation over in the sheet mode like you had two different models four parts we have four models and four sheet uh, for, so the, only one file for, for the tagging and everything right yeah no only for sheets only we create the sheets so where, where are you doing the taggings then everything in the model and you're using a we have four splits because it's more than 100 story building mm -hmm. and we split it into four models mm -hmm. because of the headings. Mm -hmm. Okay, we will tag in each model, we will create the So sheet. if you are tagging, don't tag in that model actually. Tag in a different model, like a sheet, in which you are creating a sheet, yes. Sheet model. Sheet model. Don't tag in that model then. So we can calculate all the flows and everything there? Yeah, if you use the same link, you can, you can, you can carry out that as well. Include elements in the link again. Yeah, this one. Click that. You have all your schedules. You have everything there. But we face difficulties in some projects. Which uh, type of schedule you were trying? All the schedules. All the schedules we are generating from the project itself. But most of the schedule for the FHU. Just, just send me a screenshot of that. Yeah. Yeah. FHU, all the FHUs, we are not getting problems. Because FHUs are connected from one floor to maybe next. It's the branch of the duct is going to another model. Mm. It's not connected fully in one model. Mm. Because the model is split already. Mm -hmm. It may be in one model, it's sitting in the sixth floor. It goes to the ground floor. Then the ground floor is in, in a separate model. So there is a problem. But you will create uh, the schedule for each level, right? Yeah. You won't create the full. Only we are creating from the Excel. And all the functional units we so that's the thing. <laughs> so the other thing, like one thing in Revit, one thing in Excel, then you try to club. Yeah, there is no option. Okay, can you send me a screenshot? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I will share my email address. It's kapil dot kumar at at the rate autodesk dot com. So if anybody wants to, you know, contact me or just send something, welcome. Hi, everybody. See, uh, this is related to documentation. Mm -hmm. So you have guys all are doing, you know, like we are doing subject subject parts to different services. So I have a project with 12 services, mm. like water and the CHW and the gas services. Right. And whenever I club all for documentation or CSD, so I'm unable to get the uh, dotted line visibilities. So the visibility problem is there. Like no, this all, is all below uh, services are not showing dotted. This can be controlled easily. It's, not, not yeah. it's just a few errors uh, we make generally, but it can be controlled. No, generally, what's happening is you know, when I try to connect it to two files, it's working absolutely fine. Mm. But if I get third file, third link, then no. The it's it's maybe sometimes you, uh, you know, there's some overlay settings and all those settings. Some of the files are set like that, or you know. Some things like that, but it can be done. It's not an issue because whatever stays top, it stays at top. It will hide everything at the bottom. So. But I can share that information. Yeah, sure. Just send me a screenshot if you like. Yeah, no, but three, three links, three services is working fine. Okay. Uh, fourth will come now, then automatically the properties of the first file also is going wrong. <laughs> it's not doing well. uh, it's, it's just a matter of few things here and then you can. Okay. We are free to ask questions, so we no hurry to rush out. <laughs> it's okay. Oh, sorry. I forgot to include that actually <laughs> because of time thing. But I wanted to show you in HAP actually. Anyways, yeah. Yeah, tell me. Yeah. 
shall again assign all the URLs as per VM Schneider or CV or Truckies, whatever the spe specific values they have, shall again assign in the uh, yes, you can assign. Can you yes, that, um? uh, it's a file uh, in the program data, so the exact location of that file. You can create a new U values for that thing. In in direct in directly Revit, you can't. I think. I yeah. That. So there is a TXT or. Revit dot ini something. I am not sure. I need to. I, I so it's something like INA file or XML file where you can add that thing and we show up in a rabbit. You can cre create a new U values as well. I tried for the specific U value as per PM, it's not coming out. Okay. In, in rabbit, you can't directly do, but it, it's a file name where exactly you can find. If you drop an email, I will you know, reply to you where exactly it is. So you can, you can customize, you can add, and we show in your rabbit. See, for the calculation, are you talking about uh, load calculation or? Yeah, so as per my experience as well, uh, you know, I won't suggest as for now to do the load calculations in Revit because it has some variations in calculations. I compare with train, trace, I compare with IES and HAP, which generally people use here, and the results are very like that, you know. So I suggest for the third party you know, integration with HAP where you can at least save your time in exporting the spaces and everything. But then a new thing is like uh, there is a, a plug in Energy Plus, I think, which uh, Autodesk is, uh, you know, developing more. Maybe in a year or two it will be launched as a cloud application where you can export the GDXML, do all your load calculation, bring back your results. But we, but we need to deal with HAP. Energy Plus no? Yeah, later on. <laughs> when is, is that? I hope that can extract all data from Revit to be exchanged with HAP. Yeah, it comes with HAP. It comes yeah, with But not all data can transfer from the portion. Yeah, it's at least. Uh, just space names, space names. Yeah. Not all. Yeah, it's like uh, at least it's help you in somehow, right? It's okay. It's okay. It saves some time. But yeah, so it's, it's a long time actually if you see. It's okay. <laughs> Calculating the area, putting in the manually half, so it's, it's a long time. For this building, it's like take two, three hours. It's so for large, large buildings, it's okay. Yeah. For you in this small building, it's like two, three hours. But <laughs> if you just, yeah. So it's just comparison of time. But whatever calculations, I cannot compare right with the half calculations. Whatever calculations you do, it should be done in half only. Yes. But only the thing, the input that comes should be mm -hmm. right. Can it be linked to, uh, you can extract all this output result to half and then link it to uh, the river? Now, HAP has a limitation that it can't export the results back in GBXML. That is the limitation of HAP, not Revit, right? So if it train trace 700 has that option, IES has that option, exporting the GBXML. Yes. So input back in Revit, you will get the results, all loads and everything. Yes. <laughs> you caught me on that, yeah? <laughs> Why do you put the coefficient in Revit architecture? Uh, we can add some material and layer Wall and floor and roof, and the Revit calculate the new coefficient for us. But we can't use them in the Revit MEP because when we link the architecture model in the Revit MEP, the, the, the Revit MEP can't uh, read it. So uh, MEP, Revit MEP understands spaces. Yes. Yeah. So it works on spaces and not based on. But somehow there is. Uh, I'm not sure, but there's somehow there's a work around in which you can transfer this uh, data to that spaces. Yeah. But it's not all data will transfer also. When you, when you, when you, when you monitor some elements from architecture, actually you can improve your uh, model data and your MEP. But you don't 
need it. Yeah. The first thing is to be never I just import everything from structure now because for MEP it's all rubbish, actually. <laughs> And our services are rubbish for them, actually, right? So just keep our file as much as light as much as possible, you know, and try to, you know, cope up with that. And how about the installation for that or high? Uh, we should have uh, calculate the thickness for insulation as uh, manual. Uh, Which insula insulation? Uh, yeah. Duct insulation? Duct insulation. Yeah, it shows up. It shows up the insulation thickness, length, and everything. Mm -hmm. System. Everything, fire rating, yes. Yeah. What do you require? <laughs> Shows up. Yes. Which one? That, uh, that's that's the that's the that's the See, for example, 25 m thickness you are doing. You are you you select the duct. In, 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 in size wise, we, we, in, that that will change. Yes. In insulation thickness in pipe 50 mm, uh, 25 150 mm, 50 mm. See, Revit will only uh, see. Revit is not possible to decide how much insulation it wants, how much insulation you want. So you will assign that thing, right? 25 mm, 50 mm, it's up to you. So, so we need to put Mario. It's just you click and assign 25. Oh, it's no, not no, something. No, no, what I'm saying is. You don't have to do the model manually. 50 dia pipe, that is 25 mm. But in 150 mm, we are using 50. So what you can do, create the same schedule of the pipe yeah. fittings, right? Okay, assign, clear, and do an assign the insulation. Then you filter the things, top 25, bottom 50, 100, and you assign the ins insulation 20, uh, 25, 30, 50, 60, whatever you want. Mm -hmm. So your model will be updated. Rather than moving on the model layout directly, you can do in the schedule. This is correct. I do this this way for insulation. Uh, what about the sanitary uh, calculation? Fixture units only. <laughs> I mentioned that. I think you were late in that. Can I have a copy of that? Yes, can we have a copy of this point? <laughs> <laughs> because the schedule is already arranged. Can we? This is work in progress actually, it's not fully done. Okay. Right now. <laughs> that will do. I need to ask, actually. I need to ask because, because I am developing this thing for Autodesk. <laughs> no, this is not out actually. This configuration is not out. I just wanted to show and share with you guys actually. But this is very easy. You can do it yourself. It's not something rocket science in that. I didn't use anything, add in or plug in or anything. You know, it's Huh? It's Need some efforts, man. You need to do some efforts <laughs> to get that. But it's a one time thing only. It's so a one time only. If you do that one time, it's applicable to all of all of your project. Yep. So okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.